Hey folks, here's something different. Huh. I'm going to get political. Uh oh. What will happen to my followers? What will happen to my contacts, my relationships? What will happen to my reputation? Well, only one way to find out. I can't stand being verbal and seriously political on a public stage. I honestly feel like no one will truly listen to me, or even care to think about what I have to say, or worse, despise me for what I say. I still feel that way, right now. I feel this may be for nothing. Anyway, what I have to say concerns the recent overturning of Roe v. Wade. I will say what I wish to say to two, the number two, groups of people those who support Roe v. Wade and those who are against it. Let's start with those against Roe v. Wade. That's against Roe v. Wade. It's a good time for you right now. It's a victorious time. A time to revel and relish in the defeat of a policy you believe to be wrong and evil. Congratulations. Now, millions of girls and women are suffering. Not hundreds, not thousands, millions. For years to come. I have a simple question, a very honest question. Is someone you love, or you claim to love, one of those millions? Just one. Do you have a mother, sister, a daughter, aunt, grandmother? Granddaughter, a lover, a friend, who is afraid and in pain right now, who has lost hope in her future, who feels wronged and trapped. If you love someone who is going through these unbearable and unfair feelings, then as someone who claims to love them, you have to do something for them. This is a real hurt they are feeling. There are <laughs> no words you can say to her to let her know you're listening to her fears and agony. Mm -mm. There is no gift you can buy her to make her feel like she matters. So, what can you do? Hmm? Uh, there is, in fact, one thing you can do for her. Vote. Because it was your vote, or lack of a vote that put her body and her soul into misery. Your vote, no vote, put a man in charge who appointed three of the six people that broke your woman's heart, dimmed your girl's dreams. Your action or inaction wrought depression onto someone you claim to love. Let's segue a little bit, but very relevant. This is a true story. I knew a man whose beliefs hurt the one he loved. But then he did something different to change that. This man was absolutely anti-gay rights. He was open about it and supported his stance through and through. And then his son came out as gay. And in a bizarre twist, that very same father changed his stance. For real. He even voted for gay rights up and down the ticket. He changed not for politics, not for gay rights, not for anything or anyone except for his son. He did it for him. No matter what anyone says or thinks, that was a beautiful thing to do. I don't know what happened to that father and son. Maybe they had a falling out later, or maybe their bond was stronger than ever. The point is, their strong could have only been, their bond can only be that strong. Because that father chose something different. He chose to say, to heck with my beliefs. I love my son and I don't want him in pain. I choose to support him. I want him to know I care. I want to know I care. I'm asking you to prove to her you care, to prove to yourself that you care, 
I'm asking you to vote for the woman you claim to love, for the girl you say you adore. They're suffering right now, and will be for years to come. Years! Not days, years. You may not understand why. You may have no interest in understanding why, but is it so unreasonable to do something for someone you love, even if it means nothing to you or offends you? If it'll make her happy and brighten her future, do it! As it all stands, the vote is the only thing you have left to show you care, because your vote, or lack of it, hurt her to begin with. Now... In your story, here's your twist. Your vote now can help her. Vote for the people who will fight for her beliefs. Vote for the policies that she feels will be the difference between a good life and a horrid one. Vote not for party, not for Roe v. Wade. Vote for her. Vote for what she cares about. Vote for what she treasures. I'm not asking you to change. That's impossible. Or, I'm not asking you to believe in what I believe in. I'm asking you to vote for that person in pain that you claim to love. If you don't, if you choose to cop out for any reason, if you choose to do nothing but what you've been doing, then the truth is, and this is a fact, not an opinion, the truth is, you don't care. And you never have. Like the father showed his gay son he cared, show your pro-choice woman that you too care. And this too is a fact, not an opinion. If you vote for her, then you can say without fail that you did something right for the person you love. For the rest of your lives, unto death and thereafter, that will be a truth. And it will be with you both forever. Thank you for listening this far. The next part is for my fellow Roe v. Wade supporters. <sighs> well, my friends. Eh, this sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a real stinker. <laughs> a woman's right to choose. A woman's right to privacy has been damaged. Badly. Maybe in time it will be dead. But, while the right to choose has been overturned, the freedom and the power of choice lives. And that will never change, ever. No matter the policy. The absolute truth of the power of choice. To choose how we behave. To choose how we see things. Choose how we care. How we communicate. How we do our damned hardest. To make the world a happier and lovelier place remains ever strong. Uh, let's be a little realistic right now. The will to choose that happiness and kindness is low. Not the power of choice the will to choose the will to choose is suffering right now feels non-existent right now while the urge to lash out be angry be afraid be cynical be depressed these urges mm, they're surging like wildfire so i guess right now i'm asking for you my friends who are hurting and afraid I'm asking that you too do something different to make things better. It would be unfair of me to ask our opposite thinkers to do something they've never done and not, and not ask the same of you or I. As stated from the start, this video on a public stage is my something different. And while me making this a little video may seem like small potatoes when compared to voting against your own beliefs, the truth is there is no difference because all change is relative to the individual. For me, making this video and speaking my heart openly, politically, 
and on a public stage for all to ridicule, or misinterpret, or criticize is as terrifying and opposite to my beliefs as it comes. I don't want to be here. I don't want to communicate with people against Roe v. Wade. I don't want to hear someone tell me I didn't say or do enough or that my voice or my pain has no validity because I'm the wrong gender. This is the best I can do. That should be enough. But I still have these fears. I'm shaking a little bit right now. They may be foolish fears, but I fear them all the same. And yet here I am. Why am I here? Because I feel it in my heart I gotta be. My heart is telling me to be here, to do this. Because people I love are hurting. Good people I don't even know out there, they're hurting. I don't want to be here, but I care more about my friends and those in real pain, more than my discomfort or my fear. If you, my friend, are in a grim or sorrowful place, I ask, and I, and I know it's hard, it's hard. And I ask again that you do something different. To face a fear in yourself. To stand up for what is right in your heart. But let's do it a little differently. And what do I mean by different? Right? There's a lot of definitions of different. I'll get specific. I mean the kind of different that is unique to you. Something that only you can do. Not so, not, not something you feel obligated to do. Not something you think you think you should do. Not those. No obligation, no thinking, no shoulds. Thinking on the should. None of those. Something you and only you can do that is different and specific to your life. Something that scares you. Something you've made Countless excuses not to do, but ultimately, it's what your kind and caring heart is telling you to do. What you do can be as simple as refraining from frustratingly texting or shouting at what you've read in the news. If you've never done it before, it's different. It can be as complex and grand as starting a movement to unite and put together a plan of action to make the world stronger. It can be as brief as admitting to yourself or another that you were wrong or admitting to yourself or another that you were right it can be as emotional as separating from a person who was wonderful for a time but now it's just no good it can be as silly as taking a day off from work to be with your pet and eating spaghettios <laughs> All of these simple, brief, silly, small, or big, person-specific things can be petrifyingly scary to that specific person. And again, especially if you've made excuses as to why you shouldn't do it. So once more, with feeling, I'm asking you, my friends, to face that simple, big or minuscule task that has no meaning to anyone but you and overcome it. Reignite your fire by simply remembering that you do still have power. The power to choose to make your life better. No matter how small or big the step, a single step against inner fear is an eternal victory for courage. Your eternal courage, your loving heart, your wonderful life. Are these acts of bravery the end? Oh, of course not. But it's not supposed to be the end. It's just a reminder for ourselves that we are still brave. That we are still good. That we still possess the capability to do what's right and to keep on doing what's right no matter how bad it gets. Hey, but you know what? Let's, let's do this. Fine. Let's go for the worst. If all hell breaks loose and all goes to nothing and all our efforts die in vain, huh? <laughs> Nothing will ever be able to take away those moments of true courage and strength of heart that we proudly wore like armor into battle and etched into time like DNA. Nothing will ever erase that. Nothing. True acts of the heart are forever. <laughs> I love you all, my friends. 
I'm terrified of the response I'll receive for doing this. I'm exhausted from thinking and fearing the many outcomes of this. But I'm here for you. And for me. And I'm doing it my way. And you better believe I'm rooting for you to do it your way. I wonder what you have in store for this strange world. Hmm. Hmm. We may never know. But I'm sure it'll be amazing. <laughs>